Hi guys, welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and webdesignandtechtips.com. This is another in our series of Divi for Beginners videos and you can find the link to the playlist just down below this video here. Today we're looking at the pricing table module, fantastic way of advertising your services or features or even selling a product. I've got them set up here really easily. I put a little hover effect on mine so they jump on top of each other and grow a little bit when you put your mouse over them. And of course you can link them to wherever you want, whether you've got a sales page or your contact form or wherever you wish, obviously. Really easy to do, nice little feature to have on your site. So let's get started. I'm gonna enable the visual builder. And let's go down, we'll just delete these and start from scratch. Okay, I've got a section here, a little gradient background in the section. Inside that section, I've got a row with a single column. I'm gonna hit a little dark button to add a new module. And funnily enough, we're gonna use pricing tables today. There it is right there. When it's initially put in, it puts in two little pricing tables for you. I'm gonna go into the actual module itself. I'm gonna delete the second one. We'll style out the first one. When, when we've got it the way we want it, we'll just duplicate it. Okay, well, there it is. Let's go into our first one here. You can do them all at once if you want to that way. We've only got the one. I'm gonna go into individual. Give it the title that you want it. If you wanna add subtitle, you can. Down below, you've got the currency, obviously what currency you're using to sell your product. If you want to, you can say how often it is. I'm gonna say per month by just putting month on the end. Price, choose a price that you wanna put in there. If you wanna add a button down the bottom here to take people either to your WooCommerce page, product page, or your contact form, wherever it is, however it is you like to receive your payments, Put what you want the button to say in here. And you may have noticed there's no button there. We may not have noticed because there isn't a button there. If we go down to link just below, once you put a button link in wherever you want to take your visitors, the button's going to turn up. By default, mine's orange and blue. That's the way I've got it set up in the customizer. But each module allows you to style a button any way you want. Now we skipped over our little content here. Let's go back up to the text there. Obviously, put in whatever features you want. To change it from included to not included, if you want to disinclude something, just put a minus sign in front of it. And you'll see that's turned that into a faded out version. If you decide you want a minus thing included, just put a plus in there. I'll be doing this when we copy this over for the different plans. Great. Down below that, we've got our regular background colors. And you can use single colors, gradients, images, background video, background pattern, and background mask. You can combine several of these together to get some amazing effects. Take a look at our backgrounds video in our playlist below if you want to learn more about that. I'm going to use a simple color. We've been using a, a sort of 24-24 dark gray for a lot of it. I'm going to leave it just like that. And as you can see, it's done this text field, the button field, and also the price field up here. Great, well, when you're happy with that, let's move on to the design tab. Now layout, you can make this table featured if you want to, and I'll do that when we've got some more tables there to show you what's going on at the moment. You won't notice a whole lot of difference. Bullet, they're obviously the color of these little bullet points here. Change them to whatever you want. Down below, we've got the text. This is going to do all of the text at once title price content and you can align everything left center right or justify which is going to pop that particular stuff back on the left i'm actually going to leave mine in the center i'm quite happy with that for everything if we go down further you can do everything individually for our title text i'm happy for it to be white in color as with all things divvy there's a crazy amount of fonts to choose from if you click on the default font there, just roll over them. They'll give you an example. And there's a lot of them in here to choose from. I'm going to stick with the default today. But I am going to bring its font weight up 
so it's a little bolder. It's a semi-bold there. I'm going to capitalize mine. And as I've made that quite big now, I think I'm going to pop a little bit of text shadow on there just to give it a little more definition up there. Of course, these styling options are entirely up to you. Let's move on down now. We've got the body text down here. And again, you can color and style that how you wish. I'm going to make it, make it white. But I'm going to have a different color for the features that are not included. And for anybody that didn't figure that out, obviously you can type in whatever it is you need to put in with your features there. Great. Well, like I say, I don't want the non-included features to be the same color. So if we roll down a little bit more, you've got all the same settings on all of them. There's excluded item text just down below there. I'm going to make that a sort of slightly darker color. So it's obviously not the same as the ones above. So let's get my little color picker back up here. Uh, let's see. Yep, that's a nice difference between them all. Okay, well, let's roll back up. We've got our subtitle text up there, and all of these elements have a little paintbrush connected to them. If you want to, you can click on the paintbrush. It'll take you to the design element for that particular thing. Plan A, let's just perhaps capitalize that. Fantastic. And then we've got our price frequency and currency. Again, I'm just going to use a paintbrush, currency and frequency. I'm just going to make mine white. Of course, you can make it bigger and smaller right here. Whatever works for you. And that's handy perhaps if you don't have a frequency, you can make that dollar sign a lot bigger if you want to. If you do something you don't like, simply select it, delete it. It'll go back to the default for you. Now there's our actual price text there. Again, I'm going to use the default blue that we've been using for that. And here you can change the background color of the pricing table background right here. That's just up above. I'm going to make mine solid. Great. Well, moving on down. We've done currency, frequency, excluded item. You can style your button however you wish. By going into the button, hitting the little switch, use custom styles for button. Text color is fine. I think I'll take the button background away. I'll give it a bit of a border. I don't want it quite as rounded as that. Like I say, the reason it's that rounded is because that's the way I got it set up in my customizer. But you can put your own custom in here for each button. I've been using 10 pixels borders on a lot of things around here. I'm going to just put it like that. Then perhaps when they hover over it, I might like to have that blue background in there. So we can do that by going back up where we set the button background, common to all Divi modules. If you roll over the dark writing within a module, you'll see some little icons come up. Go to the thing you want to affect, button background in my case here. If there's a little arrow, we can create a hover state. Desktops, when the mouse is not on it, just want to see it exactly like that. When they put their mouse on it, Let's perhaps use that default blue background. Great. Well, that's going to work for me. As I mentioned, obviously do what works for you. Rolling on down. We've got spacing. I actually don't want to add too much spacing. I will add a little padding on the top there. Just to give that bronze plan part a little bit more space. So let's add, say, 30 pixels. Just put it in the 30, it'll put in the picks. And we'll hit the chain to do the bottom as well. And let's just widen that up a little bit. Down below, we've got border. Well, it looks like it's got a bit of a border on there already. I quite like that. But you can change it to any color you want. And as I mentioned, we've been using that 10 pixels round border there. So I'm going to put that there also. And of course, if you uncheck the chain, you can have crazy shapes and things going on there. If that's what you like because you can do all the different corners separately like that and you do see that quite a lot but for me i'm a bit more linear than that i'm going to recheck the chain and make them all 10 pixels great well that's pretty much there for me i wouldn't mind as this is a bronze plan to make that a sort of bronzy color but of course this styling again is entirely up to you and we can do that with our title text down here 
table header background. Let's find a sort of orangey, bronzy type color, I guess. Try that one. And obviously you can put in any hex code or RGBA that you want. Okay, well that's our first one. I'm fairly happy with that. So let's just save our changes. That will take us back to the main price table. There it is. I'm just going to clone this twice because I want three prices on mine. Obviously do as many as you wish. There's once, there's twice. Then you simply go into the next one. Number two there. Rename it whatever you want. Plan B. Obviously you're going to up your price. Well, I probably would. That's up to you. <laughs> Let's say 30 bucks. Okay. And then we've got our features down here. And like I mentioned earlier, just select one, delete it, or put in your own text, obviously. But we want an extra feature with this middle one here. So I'm going to just change that minor, minus to a plus. Check take away the knot. Like I say, I'm sure you'd have some real things. I've used this a lot on web design sites for hosting. It's a great feature for that. And perhaps we'll change out that color. We click on the little paintbrush. And a sort of silvery color. Don't want it too light. That white won't stand out. Something like that. Great. We can move on to the next one. Do exactly the same thing. Number three here. Move this out of the way so you can see what's going on. Redo your things down here, obviously. And again, update your little included features here, if that's how you like to display things. Simply putting that plus in there, they get everything with this plan. I guess I better take the knots away. Although this is fictitious. Great, well I'm fairly happy with that one again. And I'll just change out that color, perhaps. Go over to our design tab, title text. We'll try that. Great, well that's okay, it's looking fine. But I'd like to have this one stand out a little bit more. You see this quite a lot. It says, it'll say best deal or most popular in the subtitle. What we can do is go over to our design. Let's just save this, make sure we're in the right one. I'll take us back to the pricing table. Go over to the one we want to affect. Now we can get over to design and layout, make this feature. It'll raise it up a bit and make it stand out. And we're pretty much done there. That's all, all I really wanted to do. I did actually have a little hover effect on mine where it grew a little bit and flipped out on top of the other ones when you hovered over it. Really easy to do if you want to do that. Let's start with the first one, I guess. So I'll save. I'm going to go into the bronze plan, our first one here. I'm going to hit design. I'm going to go down to transform at the bottom here. And we've got scale, which will make it grow. That's the one I'm going to use today. So I'm going to roll up over, get the little icons up once more. Desktop, when the mouse is not on it, I want it to be regular 100% as it is at the moment. When they put their mouse on it, let's make it grow by 10% perhaps. Just type in 110 for 110. It's growing by 10% there. Just make sure you've got that chain checked. It'll do both sides for you. But at the moment, it's kind of underneath our next door neighbor here. And I really want whatever one you're hovering on to be on top. So we can do that easy if we go over to advanced, roll on down to position. There you'll find Z index. Again, roll over, get your little arrow up. In the desktop state, I'm going to give it a Z index of perhaps 10. Then in the hover state, I'm going to give it a Z index of 20. The way Z index works, Anything with a higher number will always appear on top of anything with a lower number. You can see that's now on top of this one next door. So I'm going to go into the other two and do exactly the same thing. I think I might slow this down for a bit of drama. The time it takes to get from desktop to hover by default with Divi is 300 mils, which is pretty quick, 300 milliseconds. Still in the advanced tab, we can slow it down or even speed it up if you want to in transitions here. There's the default 300. I'm going to make mine half a second perhaps. 
Don't want any delay, want it to happen as soon as they put their mouse on it. My little go-to speed curve for hover effects is ease in, ease out. Great. We're now going to extend the transition styles to everything in this row. Throughout this row, I'm going to hit extend. I'm also going to do the same for the positioning down below. There's the position. I'm going to right click, extend positioning styles again to all modules in this row. Great. Now we're still on the hover state at the moment. If I put that back, it should go back to normal. Great. Well, let's save our changes now. Save the main pricing table settings. Let's exit the visual builder. And there we have it. If we go down, we've got some very easy to read pricing tables on there. If we hover over one, it's going to grow by 10%. And of course, you can click on the call to action button. If we go to our next one, it'll do the same thing. And as you can see, whichever one you're hovering on, it's going to come to the front because of that Z index that we did. So there you go, guys. There's a little overview of how to use your pricing tables. It's been a very simple example. Obviously, you're going to want to customize yours to whatever features you have. But I hope you enjoyed this today and found it useful. If you have, please give it a thumbs up, ring the bell, comment, share, and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Don't forget, if you have any questions, pop them below the video. I'll do my best to answer them for you or we'll make a little demo video like this one. Once again, this has been Jamie from System22 and WebDesignAndTechTips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.